Hi, Mike Cannell here with Orcas Island Leather Goods, and today I'm going to show you how to assemble our Islander Honeycomb Bag. You'll want to make sure you've already watched our How to Hand Stitch video, and the Classic Islander Bag video will show you the rest of the assembly process. In this video, I'm only going to be showing the parts that are exclusive to the honeycomb design. First, we'll attach the billets to the gussets. The billet is a smaller folded over leather piece that allows you to connect the strap to the bag and the gussets are the bag's side panels. You will see one larger hexagonal canvas piece with stitching holes and two smaller hexagonal pieces of canvas. The smaller pieces are for the billets, so take one billet and place the canvas between the two layers of leather and line up the stitching holes. You'll want to use about 32 inches of thread to attach the billets. The billet is then stitched together directly to the gusset, so you are passing through three layers of leather and the one layer of canvas on the stitch line. Make sure to backstitch at least the full two and a half stitches as this will be supporting the bag and strap connection point and you'll want it to be nice and secure. Attach the billet to the second gusset and notice the holes you see in the small square pattern is where the key loop will be attached as described in the main Islander video. Next, attach the small circle with a magnetic closure to the bottom flap. With a good side of the leather facing you, the rivet head fits into the cutout on the flap and the magnetic side of the closure is facing up. Stitch around all the holes and backstitch. You can then set this aside. The main honeycomb flap will be stitched with the good side facing up and the canvas is attached underneath. Use the larger of the hexagonal canvas pieces for the opening on the right side of the flap. The small honeycomb inset pieces are stitched onto the canvas itself and it's usually easier to add these after you have begun stitching the main canvas to the leather so everything stays in place. You will only be stitching the interior stitch lines and not stitching along the outer stitch line at all yet as that is how we will attach the back flap in a moment. The flap is attached with the back of the leather to the canvas and the magnetic closure is visible. You will have already stitched the circle onto the flap at this point and won't need to hold it as I am doing here. This is how your bag will look with the canvas stitched to the front cover. You can see the stitches go up to the outside stitch line, but not along it. As these are decorative stitches that will never be seen, you do have a lot of freedom in the order which you stitch. Stitch the hexagon on the side first, and then the main canvas. Here you can see the stitches jumping from one area to the next, so that you can maximize the thread that you already have on your needles, while keeping the front side stitching as clean as possible. You can begin with just about any thread length that you are comfortable working with. While you are welcome to backstitch to end a stitch line, these stitches will never have any real tension on them, so for a cleaner look you can secure your stitches by passing your needles under stitches on the backside, then through the thread of a stitch before melting the ends slightly. The most important thing to keep in mind is to stitch all of the holes so they are visible on the front without stitching along the outside stitch line. It's a bit of a fun mental puzzle to figure out the path that feels most efficient to you. Finally, here is the finished bag with a flap with your magnetic closure attached using the outer stitch line. It is a good idea to backstitch at least a stitch or two on this one. If you have any questions, we're here to help, so don't hesitate to reach out. Our Facebook support page is a great place to find community and quick answers. Thank you so much for watching, and from our family to yours, happy making.